and it's taken a world pandemic to blow the European issue off the front pages. However, Roger Casale, the former Labour MP, says the government are still playing fast and loose with Britain's interests in Europe. Roger Casale joins me from Italy. Great to be back, Alex. Great to see you. Roger, what is your key fears about the state of the negotiations on the timetable through the transitional agreement that are going on at the, the present moment? What difficulties do you see? Well, my principal fear, Alex, is the one that I've always had, and, and it's the one I think that is at the back of the mind of Michel Barnier and the heads of state of the 27 EU member states. Uh, they must be asking themselves, uh, are the British government in good faith? I mean, that's not something that they can say publicly, but it must be the thought in the back of their minds. And it's, it's something like that a campaigning organisation like New Europeans can say publicly, and we do. It's very difficult to understand um, what the British government are playing at the moment, what they think they are doing. What the British government must do is to request an extension or if the European Union were to offer an extension, the British government must accept that. But at the moment, it looks as if there's no prospect of uh, that happening, and therefore um, Britain will leave without a deal. But what possible motivation could the UK government and David Frost, uh, Sherpa, the lead negotiator, have for not attempting to come to an agreement? What would be the political motivation for for such a stance? It may well be that they're thinking we can wrap up the economic damage of a no-deal Brexit uh, by blaming it on the fallout from the COVID crisis. So people somehow will not notice because it will be uh, so bad anyway. That is totally irresponsible, calculating, manipulative. Uh, but uh, if that is what the game is, uh, it won't be behaviour that we've seen for the first time, will it? Now, your old party, the Labour Party, have been pretty quiet uh, about the issue of uh, an extension in the House of Commons. Do you think that's the new leader, Sir Keir Starmer, just uh, boxing clever uh, and waiting his time? Or do you think the Labour Party are genuinely ambiguous about whether there should be an extension or not? Well, I, that's a very good question, um, Alex. And um, yes, the Labour Party is a very broad church and there will be different points of view, but it's just elected a new leader with an overwhelming majority and he has a clear mandate. And he, uh, I'm sure, uh, he's a very intelligent man. He will see the, the, the folly of the Conservatives' uh, policy, not requesting an extension. Uh, and it is surprising that he hasn't himself stepped up and, and called for uh, that extension, and I hope he will do that. There is a petition, a House of Commons petition, calling for an uh, extension, which uh, thousands and thousands of people are signing, and I'd encourage your viewers to sign it. We, we all need to not just clap our hands every, every Thursday for the NHS workers and, and, and the wonderful work that's going on uh, around our communities. We must also be banging the drum for an extension because things are going to get much worse for all of us uh, if Britain leaves the EU at the end of the year without a deal. Now, one of Keir Starmer's early victories has been to force the Prime Minister into a concession on charges in the National Health Service for NHS and care workers who are overseas nationals. Uh, does that give the new Europeans encouragement that there might be further concessions on the vexed issues of settled status and other matters which are jeopardising the prospects? As a campaigning organisation, do you see that as something of a, a breakthrough for, for hopefully more concessions to come? I think that is very encouraging, Alex. Uh, I have to say um, that although I would like Keir Starmer to be calling for an extension, and I'm a little bit disappointed that he's not doing that, I, I, he has been very, very good indeed over a long period of time before he was leader as well, very committed to the issue of uh, rights for EU citizens. And uh, that has continued now into, into government. He, he 
he took up our uh, our call for EU citizens to be given the vote in all elections, as has happened in, in Scotland, very credibly there for the Scottish Government to have given EU citizens the vote for the Scottish Parliament. And I'd like to see all EU citizens have the vote in the UK, and, I, and Keir Starmer is in favour of that. Finally, Roger Casale, despite the best campaigning efforts of the New Europeans and many other pro-Europe organisations, the reality is that the Britain has brexited. Do you see any glimmers of hope for the future in your campaigning efforts as the New Europeans? Well, what I often say to uh, colleagues in continental Europe and inside the European Union is if you want to find the strongest pro-European movement in Europe, you need to look no further than the United Kingdom and especially Scotland. And so I think that it's a case of not knowing what you have until it's gone sometimes. And we have to keep that going because I do believe that one day Britain will rejoin the European Union. And when it does, Alex, I think people need to understand, as I think many do in Scotland, if I may say so, that Europe is not just a community of interests, also a community of values. I think we can learn a lot from uh, from Scotland and the way in which Scotland understands that they, we have multiple identities. We can be Scottish, British, European, all at the same time. And we don't have to cut off our nose to spite our face by leaving the European Union just because we think we have to be British rather than European. We can be both. And I think when that particular penny drops, hopefully the tide will turn. Roger Casale from Italy, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Alex.